Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is Deepika Pandita signing in again for Scalabler's desk. Uh, well, we do not have the regular industrial tracks, but we have very, very special sessions which are going to be starting. The first session being uh, Converging Industries. I have a set of lovely panelists with me and also a, a, a very knowledgeable and inspiring mentor and an independent con, uh, consultant. Uh, our moderator for today's session is going to be none other than Raman RV. Welcome, sir. Good morning to you. Very good morning. Thank you so much. Good morning, sir. He is a multi-dimensional professional who has about 30 plus years of experience across general management, marketing, sports management, and with special, <clears throat> special social impact sector. He's postgraduate in commerce in an MBA and a diploma holder in advertising and marketing. He has been associated with leading multinational companies like Obervi, Xerox, TDB Mudra, Tensu, Toyota, Hitachi, Chili's, and Lagdreya, and also with wide variety of Indian companies like Weekender, Himalaya Drug Company, Future Group, Srinivasai Hatcheries, Tenrik Padukone Dravid Center for Sporting Excellence, ILFS Sports Hub, Mediasist, Medibuddy, Swasti CMF. His association with these companies has varied from being an employee to heading them as a consultant, mentor in formulating business plans, strategizing to the next level of the development and the growth for around and surrounding. The training and brand marketing planning has been also the part of his implementations. Combined with his knowledge of p and management in marketing, branding, retail business of sports, social causes with a focus on implementation and execution. He has been able to add immense value to the organization and project he has been part of so far. So welcome, um, Raman sir. It's, it's really great to have you here and have you moderate this session. Let me also take you through the, the lovely set of panelists that we have. We have from industry professional, uh, Mr. Sasi Kumar Radhakrishna, Director of Business Development at EDC Creative Technology Solutions. Welcome, sir. Very good morning to you. Morning. Morning, sir. Uh, and from institution professional, we have Mr. Thomas Dahl, Director and Dean, Straight A School of Design. Morning, Thomas. Good to have you here. From industry good. professional, we good have- Good morning. Mr. Very good to be here. From industry professional, we also have Mr. Rajiv Shukla, Director, Electric Mobility Program, Shakti Foundation. Good morning, Rajiv Shukla. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And the last uh, industry professional, Mr. Debrita Ghosh, Director, KPMG. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning. Good morning. So we look forward to a very interesting session. Over to you, uh, Raman, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that, that long list that you read out, uh, is not just embarrassing, half of it is not true also, I think. <laughs> You're just but, being humble, sir. Thank you. Uh, so let me, thank you, Deepika. Let me quickly uh, make the best use of the hour we have. Uh, let me introduce this uh, wonderful set of panelists I have, and I'll keep it brief. But being brief does not mean these are highly qualified and experienced people. For the sake of time, uh, uh, Mr. Ghosh, Mr. Devaprata Ghosh is a director in KPMG, a vast experience across skill development, large scale program management, team management, business development, financial modeling. The list is endless, but a director at KPMG says it all, I guess. Uh, then we have Mr. Uh, Ruchur Shukla, who is the lead who leads Shakti's electric mobility program. Again, a person with vast experience across multiple industries. Uh, and what he brings to the table really is possibly uh, a hands-on understanding of uh, industry convergence. Uh, Sashi Kumar, who is part of uh, the EDC team, multiple years across uh, science, management, strategic delivering, delivery of projects, marketing, a multidimensional person with vast experience. Uh, and last but not the least, uh, Thomas Dahl, or as he said, either way, Dahl Thomas, who's uh, who's joining us from across across international boundaries at 5 a.m. in the morning, and who's the director of Strategic School of Design, uh, is setting up the Bangalore unit as we are speaking, uh, and understands designs across uh, multiple 
multiple industries and areas. Uh, like I said, brief but uh, brief introduction to the panelists. So let me jump into the topic with the first thing I thought would be relevant is, uh, what does industry convergence actually mean? Uh, and if I can start with Mr. Ghosh uh, and, and request him to say, or un give us an understanding of what in his opinion is uh, industry convergence, what does it mean? Uh, thank you, Mr. Raman, and good morning to all the participants and everyone present here. Uh, traditionally, in the past, possibly in the uh, late 80s or even early 90s, what we have seen is that uh, uh, the focus of education is more compartmentalized, quote unquote, if I can call it. Therefore, uh, your focus in terms of your education and subsequent experience uh, are in a spe specific domain or in a specific sector. And uh, you, you tend to attain kind of uh, expertise in that particular sector. But over a period of time, particularly uh, 2010 onwards, or if I may say 2000 onwards, when this globe, after the effects of globalization and more particularly industry 3.0, industry 4.0, when such concepts uh, keep on coming, then the nature of work or the future of work is actually uh, quite changing. Uh, if I look at from a perspective of uh, uh, my core skill set, that becomes more important rather than having some specialization because uh, to execute in a particular work in a particular sector, the boundaries are slowly, slowly blurring. Uh, I'll give you possibly uh, some examples. Today, if we talk about precision engineering, it's not only about manufacturing. It is applicable as good as in the aviation sector or maybe in the automotive sector as well. So although the applicability part might be different, uh, varying to sector to sector, but these things are more common uh, across the sector. Similarly, we have already seen uh, right from maybe mid 90s itself, how IT is playing a role, larger role, uh, not only in the private sector case, but as well in the government sector space also, particularly to ensure the governance, the ease of doing business and providing a common platform to people, so those kinds of things. So what I'm trying to say that uh, the, the straight differentiation or straight compartmentalization between either from an education perspective or work perspective, is slowly, slowly blurring out, and you are more prone to have some basic skills or some core skill set, which will allow you to jump between sector as well as work on multiple sectors. But at the same time, you tend to earn certain specialization when you are working in this, but uh, working on your sector. Uh, another example before I stop. So <clears throat> both you and me, uh, you would agree that from a consulting world perspective. Uh, you tend to work on a multiple assignments, multiple different type of clients, uh, and there will be a horizon to which will cutting across. Uh, and those kinds of skills that help you to thrive uh, even in a different client requirement in a different sector. And uh, so from that perspective, I would say convergence of industries uh, is a happening phenomena from knowledge perspective, from the way we work perspective, and even the way we execute things. Hey, thank you so much. I think you have put this in perspective in, in, in a very comprehensive way. Uh, if, if I can jump to Thomas, uh, and from a design perspective, Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, design by definition cuts across multiple industries. It's not industry specific. Uh, design possibly from, from times immemorial has always had convergence inbuilt into it. So how do you see uh, industry convergence from, from this vantage point of a design expert? So it will be a kind of same answer than Mr. Deborah Gosh. Uh, design has been specialized since the last, uh, you know, um, we'll say 30 years. Uh, it has been more and more complex, more and more deep in each of the departments of design or product design that are split into IT, graphic design, and then interaction design. So it has been compartmented, specialized. And now we realize that uh, a designer, when it's working on a project, um, is working on very complex projects. 
So it means when you're working as a, I don't know, a car designer, you're not only designing a car. You're designing the car, you're designing the way people are going to use it, you're designing the way people are going to interact with, with the, all the instrument panels, but also with all the connectivity system, with the, the knob that is going to help you to navigate through the, all the interface of the car. You are also working on the brochures. So the, the work of designers is, coming, is becoming more vast. So you need to be multi-specialized. And by doing this, you're also working with a lot of specialists. You're working with engineers, you're working with marketing, you're working with um, electronicians, you're working with a, a, a lot of different kind of guys. On the design is most of the time, you know, all these different specialists that are working with you all have their own KPIs. They all have their own, uh, you know, uh, specific aim to reach. The engineers, mostly the engineers uh, aim will be to be sure that everything works, okay? So in order to achieve this, they would never take any risk. They would not change anything. You know, like this has been working for 20 years, let's do it again, okay? But if you look at the other way, the designer's challenge is to make things change. The marketing guy would be to make things a lower cost and all this kind of stuff. So I'm making it very, very caricaturistic um, approach. But so the designer's job is to be sure, to assure that all these different aims that are all aiming at different uh, objectives. One is to reduce the cost. The other one is to be sure that everything works. The other one will be that uh, the millimeters between two parts are well, uh, well achieved and things like that. To be sure that everything works together. So I would say that the designer work today is to be a kind of glue, to be sure that all the objectives of everyone are matching together into one project. And actually the designer work now is transforming into being a translator. I understand what the engineer says and what the engineers want, and how can I translate it into something that can also match with what the marketing wants and what with the designers want and what with the um, whatever the other uh, uh, stake, stakeholder will, will want. So design has evolved into a more complex work where we are centralizing all the information in order to mix it into one project that fits all the different uh, participants of the project. And it's becoming more and more complex because projects are themselves becoming more complex. Before, when you were making you know, a small object, one designer could do it alone with engineers, of course. But now when you're working on a project, you've got uh, 10 engineers working who will be taking care of the interface, one will be taking care of the electronics, the other one will be taking care of the machines and all this kind of stuff. So you're multiplying the number of um, people you're working with and it's becoming very, very complex. So design deal with all this complexity and be sure that all the aims of all the actors of every project are working on only one direction, which is one project, in order to be sure that uh, everybody is going to pull the rope in the same direction. So Understand. It's, it's evolving very, very fast and um, making a big, big difference in the job, in the work, because now uh, designers, you know, 10 years ago or five years ago were needed only the skills, skill set of design, where you need to be a good designer. Okay, so understanding the project, understanding the processes, and making good work as a designer. Now, designers are more and more becoming like project manager kind of uh, work, and they need to understand people also, work as a team manager, work, you know, so the soft skills of designers are as much important nowadays uh, than their uh, art skills. So the job itself have moved on the mentality and the, 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 the teaching of design has evolved into a biggest, bigger part of uh, soft skills into the job of designers in order to, um, to face this um, uh, team managing uh, part of design. Designer is going up in the hierarchy in the, in the projects now you've got a lot of designers that are a, that are more um, project leaders and growing very fast on the hierarchy because of his capacity of being able to bound everybody together on one on one only line that is a project. I understand, Thomas. I think I think you've 
you have put in the perspective of design which you know how it's it's evolved across uh, over the times and how it's becoming larger and bigger than what it used to be uh, can i if i can bring in ruchir Absolutely. at this point in time and to build on something that thomas said towards the end uh, how does somebody how does the skill set change for somebody in in the in the context of industries converging uh, converging of industries is a reality as we are established how does somebody skill themselves uh, to be prepared or or to take on the converging industry scenario uh, thank you mr raman uh, let me just quickly uh, uh, take a uh, you know a small introduction about the organization i come from uh, shakti foundation uh, with the motive of bringing the climate change uh, in terms of reducing the uh, carbon emissions and bringing the temperature down is the sole motive and that those kind of projects we fund uh, while we touched upon this topic uh, there is a enormous amount of collaboration now which is happening if i uh, for the moment focus it in the mobility space smart mobility as one leg today uh, this space is bringing uh, the core sectors which we know that like power sector or energy sector it brings the core of electrical electrical competences or academia mechanical automotive software solutions everything connected together it can go deep as much as possible on the complexity size as well as it has a breadth available for the people our friends and colleagues or youngsters who are in even in diploma or skills because this is such a new billions of dollars of opportunity opening up when i say mobility next gen mobility it's mobility on the ground primarily it's all fuel through the more efficient energy efficient solutions so therefore uh, we are talking when mobility is on the ground in air or water any media which makes physical movement from point a to point b is all we are talking about today and therefore there is a very good convergence which we are seeing of all these skill set including even communication where we talk about increasing content of software therefore cyber security becomes very good important aspect of it right connectivity uh, the boost to the bottom of the pyramid in terms of lot of ser new services support system is going to be built up so huge huge employment potential opportunity for the youngsters who are a fresh want to join state uh, as you know after their 10 10 plus 2 or uh, diploma or graduation whatever stream they are coming from any liking of the individual has a role to play be it as i mentioned mechanical electrical automotive power electronics otherwise many of these streams used to be in the baskets in the previous couple of decades if we see now everything has come together and everything going hand in hand as mr thomas well said as part and parcel of overall ecosystem solution which need to be addressed by virtue of design design of not the product but design of total ecosystem or design of solution per se mobility solution per se so what i see youngsters and people who are adapt uh, ready to adapt for the change and get into a skill enhancement they can leverage any of their liking i i forgot to mention one very important aspect electrochemistry right which has been earlier a combination in some of the solutions like telecom or solar as a stationary product now it's in the car thermal management has got a very good solution today for the for example i see cars on the road for a moment they are polluting that's we all know that beyond that the noise they add and they are like on heater on the road like each car is few kilowatt of heater on the road if you take a thermal imager camera few hundred meters up sky you'll find a completely red hot line on the road not i'm not talking the tail light you see generally when on the road but it's the thermal profile of the vehicle and especially in situations where the 80 to 90 percent of year we are turning on ac therefore cars are burning that much of heat on the road adding to the you know temperature so overall a great ecosystem bridging together all sorts of options young to mid age to old people 
anybody who wants to play the game, he has a role to play. Thank you very much. I'll stop here. No, no, thanks, Richard. Thank you. I think great. If I can get in Sashi here to, to build on what uh, Richard just mentioned about skills, uh, would you say, Sashi, that in, in the converging industry scenario, soft skills are, are becoming more relevant than they were before? And soft skills is going to be critical for a youngster to be able to uh, take advantage of industry convergence. Right. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Raman and fellow panelists. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a very interesting discussion on uh, convergence. So as uh, I'll address your question, but I thought I'll also set a context to uh, your question and also to some extent the discussion we have today. So convergence is what normally think people say is opposite of divergence. So I had attended a very interesting talk by Professor Mashelkar, a former director general of CSIR, probably in late 90s. And his talk was very interesting at the Indian Institute of Science. And he said, there is borderless science and borderless engineering. And these borderless science and borderless engineering will lead to huge innovations in, in this convergence of different sectors. And these sectors will spawn off different industries. And you know the way you know, we have our lives and the products designed for, for our lives. So, I think the biggest inventions have also been happened because of convergence. So you take the present uh, COVID scare or the pandemic, which we are all facing, the PCR reaction or the PCR test, which has been done, which is a polymerase chain reaction. Um, the, the, rea the, the polymerase chain reaction was uh, you know, discovered by a biologist called Carrie Mullis. And he was assisted by a mathematician to, you know, uh, elucidate that reaction and standardize the reaction and for which he got a Nobel Prize. So I think all big innovations and all big inventions have happened because of convergence. If, if you do deeply analyze uh, those inventions or uh, innovations. The other important thing is uh, when we are talking of industry 4.0, as one of our panelists, Mr. Devaprata mentioned, the new professional and also related to soft skills, what you said, the new professional. So if I'm a manager in an industry 4.0 setup, if I'm a manufacturing manager, so I should have traditional management skills. I should have manufacturing skills, CAD CAM, computer aided manufacture, computer aided design. I should have, uh, you know, knowledge in AR, VR, because you will be actually, you know, conveying this or training your workforce using AR and VR technologies or MR technologies. I would also want to bring in specialists. So let's say I would have material specialists. I would have a special manufacturing specialist. So if you see convergence is going to be a reality, uh, it, is, it is going to be, be there. And I think uh, the fellow panelists in the previous tracks mentioned, apart from your core skills, please acquire additional skills which supplement your core skills. And this was across all the panelists. We have 40 tracks, I think, from, we have finished almost 30 of them. And I think across all panelists said, apart from your core skills, please acquire additional skills which can supplement your core skills. So convergence is here to say. So for, for people who want to get into convergence thinking or convergence mindset, I, the way I would put it is put your core skill as one if you think of a Venn diagram, in one circle, put your core skill. In a, in a second or third circle, put your supplementary skills. And you see the cusp or the convergence. And that's where you will make your mark. And that's where you would like to specialize. And I think all of us have to start. Uh, this is kind of an empirical model for people to think. All of yeah. us should start thinking in this way. And coming to especially soft skills, I think convergence will happen. And soft skills is the glue to have to make convergence happen. Nice. Right? nice. Because you, you are actually interacting with, as I said, if you're a production manager, you're talking to a material specialist, you're talking to an AR, VR specialist, CAD CAM, CAE, and finally, all of these converged in helping you make a product or a service. So I think it is the soft skills which will actually bring, and that's a glue which will bring all these skills together. And you have to bring in the right frame of mind and the right questions to the right 
target. I think uh, Thomas also mentioned uh, design uh, managers like a coordinator. So when you are in 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 a convergence sweet spot, you are also coordinating multiple facets and multiple technologies with multiple skill sets. So I think soft skills is very critical in bringing all of them together. Uh, that's great. I think soft skill is the glue is very well put. Uh, uh, if I can get back to uh, Mr. Ghosh, and specifically with reference to, let's say, uh, make it relevant to the youngsters out there, uh, convergence is reality, soft skills is the glue, people have to be multidimensional. Uh, and let's say, let's make it immediate. The pandemic has, the coronavirus situation has brought upon the inevitability that people are saying, whatever job I get, I'm ready to do because jobs are being lost, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, In this sort of a scenario, Mr. Ghosh, how does a youngster sitting out there qualified in a certain stream uh, make himself relevant for doing something else which he's actually not qualified for? How does he actually go about this task? Yes, uh, so, uh, so uh, see, the, uh, not only, uh, of course, pandemic has made the overall situation more worse for us uh, uh, looking for a job or uh, with a certain background, uh, you're already looking for a job. But I would say he, even without pandemic, uh, the job market uh, has started looking for a different kind of thing. Okay. So as a student, what should I do? So if I'm pursuing any uh, undergraduate courses, so apart from my core subject, uh, now various education institutions have come out with a kind of option that what are the top ups that uh, you can kind of do along with your main course. So when I say top up, these are not traditionally uh, your regular curriculum. This might be more uh, either from a soft skill perspective or from your IT skills perspective, which we say more like a a co combination of finishing school kind of concept. Now, if you are approaching the job market with this additional set of options, uh, let's say uh, I'm, a, I'm a commerce graduate, but at the same time I have learned, I'm just giving a broad example, at the same time I have learned tally, or at the same time I have learned any accounting software uh, uh, al along with my courses. So your acceptability as well as your adaptability to the actual industry situation improves much more. And I think that will definitely uh, improve your uh, uh, ability to get a job more quickly. If I talk about particularly uh, from this pandemic perspective, I think there are other factors like uh, how comfortable you are with the use of tech. I'm talking about more from a mid-level job or an entry-level job perspective. Uh, things like how comfortable you are uh, in handling technology, how comfortable you are in talking to clients over an online mode or, or in a virtual mode. But we have the physical uh, uh, thing. Obviously, we all understand that a face-to-face -face relationship creation and uh, uh, doing a project or doing a business is a different thing and doing it online is a different thing. So. Uh, your ability to, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the ma manage the use of technology, convincing power over on a virtual platform, how you interact with client, how you react under stress situation, because you are already going through a lot of stress from a mind space perspective, from a uh, quarantine perspective, and many other things. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, if you see these days, uh, whenever I open uh, LinkedIn and other things, I saw uh, youngsters are actually utilizing their time by doing various available online courses. Most of them, they're taking benefits of the free courses by Coursera or Udemy or an academy and other things. But uh, I think that's the best use of time where people are making in this pandemic because those additional uh, uh, acquisitions of additional skills is definitely going to help you in the market. Uh, if I if I if I can just bring a global example here, so in India that kind of concept is not very popular. But let's say for a country like Singapore, where they have concepts like uh, uh, skill credit. So if you are a working professional, or if you are creative uh, during the period of your employment, if you are 
um, acquiring some additional knowledge. So uh, there is a public job portal which will actually help you to further counsel and further mm -hmm. up your career. True. Those kinds of initiatives actually uh, uh, kind of incentivize you. But I would definitely to summarize whatever I have said that uh, apart from the traditional courses or curriculum that you are reading, you have to have certain kind of additional skill set uh, to be more acceptable from the employer's perspective. I'm sure uh, Ruchir and Sashi will agree with me uh, later on, maybe in their comments, they can also uh, clarify this. Thank you. No, no, absolutely. And, and skill credit is, yeah, Singapore example is a great one. Uh, if I can keep going in the same circle, it just makes it easy. So Thomas, again, I would, from your perspective, how does a youngster get ready? Uh, you, 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 you very wonderfully articulated the, how a designer is much more than what he used to be going up, higher up the hierarchy. Uh, in general, how does a youngster equip himself to the converging world today? What does he have to do really? So for us, um, you know, in Strat School of Design, we, we are uh, doing this for a long time because as I said, the, the evolution of, uh, of this convergence is a job that designers are doing since uh, a decade or two. Okay, that their job is to be con the converging point of all the others. So this is something that is not very new for us, for design, that you need to, to be converge and in order to converge, you need these soft skills and all the skills together. So in order to make sure that all these students are ready to, uh, to achieve this kind of uh, multidisciplinary skills, we are making sure uh, in the school, in the in Strat, that uh, we are achieving what we call a T-shape profile, okay? I'm going to explain what it is. A T-shape, so you know the T-shape T is like that. When you're training uh, a specialized guy, you know, like a, an expert, you're training an I shape, you know, a vertical shape. It means the expert will know everything from A to Z on a specific project, okay? He will be super focused on something, okay? This is what we call an I shape, okay? But also you've got some uh, courses that are training students to be generalists, okay? Where they will know from A to D, on multiple, multiple, multiple different uh, subjects themselves, okay? And nowadays, what we just discussed all together is that we, we realize, on design it has been th this way since a long time, that people need not only to be very skilled in one, one uh, their particular subject, like engineering, design, uh, marketing, whatever it is, but they need to be very skilled with these this, uh, courses. But at the same time, they need to have a lot of generalistic um, knowledge about everything else, like a little bit of, uh, I don't know, electronic, a little bit of uh, computer, a little bit of uh, manufacturing process, a little bit of new technology, a little bit of this, 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 this. Okay? So for, in order to be a good designer, you need now to be first a good designer, but you need to understand everybody that you're going to work with. And this is what we call the T-shape profile. And in order to achieve this, schools need to uh, stop teaching. They need to stop teaching, okay? They need to mentor students into a project phase with different objective and different people coming from different industry. There is, uh, you've all noticed this, there is a new education plan for India that is imp imp implementing this already a little bit, and uh, this multidisciplinary um, uh, stuff is coming. So this is going on the way, but this is what you need to achieve when you're a student in order to get the best job. You know, Google, Amazon, all these big, big companies are now looking at this kind of profile when they're hiring. They are not looking at any more experts and things like that, because an expert is like a, 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 a racing horse, you know, with, blinders on the side. They don't see what's happening on the side. So all the uh, sample that uh, Mr. Sashi was speaking about, you know, about the, the mathematician that was working with a genetician to find something. This is not happening if you're not looking at anything else than what you are looking at uh, as an expert. 
So this is something that is needed today. The world is, as I said at the beginning, the world is becoming more complex. You can't just be blindfolded on what you do only. You need to yeah. open um, everything. This is what, what creativity is. In order to have one ID, one domain, you need to look at something else uh, in order to get the creativity of this domain into yours and matching it, okay? This is what convergence is all about. So in order for us to get ready to get ready for this, there is only one thing that needs to be very, very important for students is curiosity. Curiosity, you know, uh, when you're studying something about poetry, okay, uh, on, uh, let's say you're, you're studying poetry. Poetry, you know, in order to have some poetry, you need to have some rhythm in your, in your verse, okay? You need to have some architecture. This is making music, so you need to learn about what's music, and you need to ask yourself a question, why, why, why? And then this why will come from different directions. And this is this game of asking yourself why, and trying to find yourself answers about yeah. the core um, reason why things are done this way. That That's will help you, uh, the plasticity in your brain, because your brain is very uh, plastic, beautiful machine, but you need to train your plasticity to get the habits of, okay, this is done this way because another thing is done this the other way and it's interacting with this. And you need to understand the full uh, ecosystem around one concept, around one object, around one idea. So yeah, my advice is to get ready for the convergence, to get ready for this T-shaped profile is to be curious. And to be curious, uh, it's uh, first thing is to stop you watching YouTube or Netflix you know, watching YouTube for the people that are following, you know, the, the bloopers on all this uh, stupid stuff that are time wasting on the, on the live because this is nine, nine per, 90% of the traffic on YouTube is to look at this kind of stuff. But start looking at uh, more interesting um, speech, you know, to, to start to, to, to ask themselves questions and to try to find themselves answers. This is the kind of skills that people are going to, uh, to need tomorrow in order to hire them. You know, yeah, as I, I said on uh, Amazon, and I'm, I'm just finishing with this, in Amazon and all these big GAFAs companies now, they are not looking at your, um, your graduation. They are not looking if you're coming from MIT, they are not looking if you're coming from Harvard, they, are not, they don't care. They are not looking if you're coming from um, informatics, if you're coming from IT, if you're coming from biotechnology, they don't care. They are taking, 50 guys, they are putting them in a room, they are giving them a problem to solve. And the guys that are solving the problem got an interview or got a job. I understand. You don't solve it, you don't. And they don't care what you're coming from. So you need to have this kind of plasticity of mind first to be able to understand the complexity. Understanding the complexity is the most important skill that you need to have tomorrow. And from that, you need to be creative from it. So start learning. And not only one, but as Mr. Sashi Kumar said, you need to learn all the skills, the, the, the side skills, the side um, knowledge that are surrounding your own core uh, um, skill field yeah. uh, to get to get the tape yourself. Schools Understood. are support; they are responsible. They should be the one doing it, but not a lot of them are doing it. As far as now, as we all know. They are making race course or you know, like uh, blindfolded experts. And um, it's very rare to find good schools making this opening. It's I understand. Changing, um, I understand. It's, it's, so it's, I, I hear you. I think I cur like. curiosity is, is something that is a, is a great way to sum up in a, in a single word. Uh, for paucity of time, if I can jump to Ruchir and, and ask, you, you mentioned something at the beginning itself uh, on which Mr. Ghosh and Thomas built upon. Uh, and what that's what we are talking. Soft skills, very important. But do you think there is something beyond soft skills that a youngster can actually do today? The new education policy possibly touches upon it in a little way. But is there something specific a youngster can do to be ready for the converging world? Thank you. Uh, the very first thing on the line is, each of us and youngsters especially should know how to use their hands, legs, minds together. So skills which 
make them use their hands, fingers, do something really practical on the ground so that there is a base created, first of all. You know, whenever we have to make a building, it's very important we first have a strong base. So today in present scenario, most of the time we observe, we quickly, as well said by a couple of our panelists, we quickly get into the virtual world only and do not create a strong foundation. We shouldn't be ashamed. I have always learned many of the leaders which I'm referring here, who have told whatever walk of life they have been when they were leading the tech organizations, many of them have told in the group meetings that they took few days off, went to the mechanic shop when I was in Delphi for 10 years and then Mahindra Electric Reva, all the places, even Chetan for that, just to quote, he just post the you know clothes and just go inside the car. Where is that? Where is that fire? We have to discover it. It necessarily not to be only in automotive or one specific field, enormous. So a sharp eye, keen observing mind, having trust whatever we have. First of all, we need to have a trust and strong belief with absolute fearlessness that we are here, we are here for good, and we are going to be making some impact. That's what is the first thing we need in our all, all youngsters. And then get ready to make your hands dirty. Do whatever in front of you, wherever your heart beats, go do it, couple of days. Don't watch only on videos or, they are good as a giving a reference, but go try it. I've been a martial artist in my life and uh, you know, very well said by, by my coach, everybody dreams seeing Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee movie that, hey, this is the way I make a, kick or punch, he says, as soon as you get that feel, get out, out of your bed or whatever couch you are sitting at, stand properly and try it out. See the gap and then practice. Gap is only going to be visible when you are really on the ground, not when you are imagining along with the video. You don't see the gap then. And that is where I think very strong, uh, you know, determination and, you know, sharp observation lies in. Few other things which I just add here, while imagining uh, you know, solutions or anything to dream is very strong ability one need to have. As I said with the analogy of martial arts, in instantaneously trying to next phase, convert it by doing some way to accomplish it alone and you know, rally al along with the partners or party. So you learn a lot of team building abilities which a couple of us startups up, start up are doing that very good. So such culture need to be popularized starting from early days in the schools, which is what I think in the academic or education system, beyond the education or standard lectures on fundamentals, which are very good available on tubes, right? We can start interacting of practicing that knowledge through the conversation, which was at time age old style have been to a teacher or mentor and mentee cross questioning to really get to the various meaning and various applications of that small knowledge, which has a large impact in terms of applications. So I think those are the couple of things which I would say very critical, apart from all the subject matters which we have discussed in the last, I mean, previous uh, discussion. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Thank you so much. Uh, Sashi, in the, in the, if I can take in the interest of time, since we are running short of time, uh, there is a there are questions already coming in, so I'll put the first question to you, and you can use that as a basis to uh, figure out. And this is a very specific question, which is nice. Which is, what are the areas to look out for from converging industry, where the youth will find opportunity? So they want specific areas uh, rather than broad strokes that we are possibly talking about. Saying, what are those areas to look out for, uh, so that they find job opportunities there? Sashi? Sir, you're on mute, Sashi, sir. Sashi, you're on mute. Sorry for that. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good question. And um, uh, I think fundamentally, uh, you, know, we, you need to learn how to do convergent thinking first. Only then you can develop convergent skills. Uh, in our experience, you know, we built a whole business based on convergence. We do museums and experience centers. 
So there are multiple skills which converge. So we are talking to a civil engineer, then an architect, to an interior designer, to an AV technologist, to content development, to integration. And once, once all these, these fuse, <clears throat> we get an overall experience, right? So <clears throat> I gave you this practical example because uh, we've, had, we've had very interesting situations when we discuss in projects, uh, when we talk to some person, let's say an architect, we'll say, okay, uh, there is a particular intervention coming there. Uh, many times people say, okay, that's not my field, that's somebody else to do. And what happens is, I think that's the first danger. When, when you are in a project or when you are in a discipline or in a job with convergent thinking, as somebody mentioned, the curiosity and the, the toolkits of convergent thinking has to be in place because you can't switch off yourself and go back and say it's somebody else's jobs. The moment you putting yourself into that situation and realize that to get the end product is a result of multiple skill sets and multiple convergent thought processes. So my, my, uh, from, from our experience, what I can tell youth here is uh, it's there when, don't expect that it's an elusive thing some lying somewhere. It's there in everybody's career today, everybody's workday work day life. It, it's not an isolated experience. It is there everywhere. And what we are trying to tell, and I think that's the theme of today's discussion, we are seeing convergence now happening at the speed of light at workplaces, at technologies and innovations happening. Convergence is no longer a topic which can be discussed in isolation. It's happening very rapidly, very fast at the workplace. So uh, answer to a specific uh, answer to the question is, look out for, if your core skill is, let's say, uh, you know, CAD CAM and engineering, look out for, you know, uh, analysis and you know testing all this you will use convergent skills and convergent tools so the more you faster you acquire those skills you become a well-rounded personality or, or or a skill resource in that workplace so uh, yeah, sure. that's a specific answer uh, i can have to that question so so i think i think what what is uh, i think what what is being asked is can we specify area so is it an area like fin fintech is it an area like sports nutrition? Uh, I think we are all making the point that this is a way of life. It is not about one specific industry, but I think specifically what, what, what the question is, can we identify areas? And I can think of a few examples. Mr. Ghosh, can you think of a few examples beyond, not beyond, like FinTech, yeah. sports nutrition, yeah, so, nutraceuticals? Uh, are there yeah. more areas? Yeah, FinTech is definitely one. Second area would be possibly health analytics. Third area would be education technology, what we call it, ed tech. Then fourth will be agri tech because increasingly we are seeing uh, uh, application of technology in the agriculture domain. Uh, then uh, uh, fifth would be uh, the uh, precision manufacturing and uh, in those areas. But uh, th there are more. In fact, uh, there is a large focus on uh, health area apart from health analytics also, like uh, the health infrastructure digitization. There are concepts like digital twin, which is also coming in, which is more like a, uh, what should I say, optimization tool for a product or for a process. So uh, those are the expertise area and the horizontal would be definitely, as all of the panelists said, the critical thinking, problem solving and design thinking part of it. Hey, super. That's that's a very specific one. I have, I have a quick point to add. Yeah, just to just one specific, point. To be more specific. Sorry. Uh, so let's say if you're a doctor today, I think a doctor ten years down the line uh, should have a good uh, you know AI and uh, decision tool analysis skills because uh, that that's that, that's a future. You know. Sure, sure. I think we we have. I a think so if, if I can just add something, uh, I think the, trying today. To figure out which are the area where you need convergence is going to be wrong because you know the world is changing super fast and even faster every day and we don't know what are the jobs that are coming in five years okay so students are training today for what's coming in five years and we don't have an answer to give what i'm what i'm going to say is that every job should have this complexity uh convergence because every job, you know, 
in every job you can make huge mistake if you're just an expert. If you look at the plastic bags, you know, plastic bags is an issue. So we ask an expert of plastic bags to say, what can we do in order to avoid the plastic bag? They say, stop the plastic bags. There was no co economic expert. There was no log logistic expert involved into this. So the decision was an expert's decision. Stop the plastic bag. True. Is that in order to, 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 there was a gap here, there was the missing things, the plastic bag itself. So came up some other solutions around the plastic bag to carry things, which yeah. are this woven uh, fabric stuff. But this fabric is made of plastic, and these bags are even easier in plastics than the, on normal plastic bags. So the result is worse. So, whatever. What I'm saying is that when a decision is taken by someone that is only an expert, it's most of the time a bad decision. And after that, on the project, it's going bad. And this is for all the departments, not only for the one that has just been mentioned, which are more known today, the more advanced, the one that are uh, making a job where we can put a name on a job already today. But all the, all the jobs are going to be needing these T-shaped profiles and this I, 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 curiosity I, I, and all. Sorry to button, Thomas. We, we are running short of time and we have a couple of more questions. Yeah, uh, so if we, can, if we can keep the answer short, it will help. Uh, Richard, I think one interesting thing that emerges is, is technology the glue or is technology a prerequisite for convergence? Uh, if so, how does one approach this whole thing? Is technology an essential ingredient for convergence? Uh, short answer is yes. We are in an era of technology and technology per se has so many dimensions. So, uh, and it's, it's not a big hurdle to cross through. It's like today's life, like uh, two, three decades back, getting bit computer literate was minimum required, right? So today, in terms of technology use of AI, data analytics, some making sense out of that. If not really a big, uh, you know, enabler for that, but at least ability to connect with such people as clue, what I think Mr. Thomas well said, is really required. And uh, I, I, in my opinion, it's big yes. Super. Uh, quick question and answer, Sashi. Uh, if technology is 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 a is a vital ingredient of convergence. And with what Thomas said so beautifully, uh, that you don't even know what the problem is going to be five years from now. Uh, how does a complete non-science, non-tech, non-engineering person even get ready for this world out there where technology is vital, but the problems are not even known today? How does a youth get ready for that? Uh I think to repeat what I said, first is curiosity, because as uh, I think uh, uh, we can't have those blinders with us anymore. We, we need to, uh, you know, remove these blinders. So curiosity is one. And <clears throat> always uh, a general interest in understanding what are the related disciplines which are involved in your area of, uh, you know, expertise. Uh, you cannot, I mean, there were situations where you said there is an expert for everything and it is that expert's job to do it. I think gone are those days. Gone are those days uh, with especially industry 3.0 transitioning to industry 4.0. You need to have uh, all these skills. So it's like just saying, uh, uh, Mr. Harish, I have a good example to tell you. If you are an accountant today, you cannot say I don't know how to use computers or computing. So you need to, entire accounting is done through ERP and accounting packages. So yeah. that is the first level of convergence which happened 15 or 20 years ago. The next level of convergence will be something else. So it's a moving target. Sure. So be curious and look forward to it. Super. I think, Mr. Ghosh, a specific question, if all of us, and, and the questions are also, if convergence is a reality, uh, what is the missing link in our education process that doesn't equip us to to be ready for this? What, what is the missing link? I think uh, there are three aspects to it. One is the, the way the current content and curriculum have been designed. So uh, by nature, as of now I'm talking, before, uh, and of course, as you mentioned, NEP is trying to address this to an uh, extent. But as of now, uh, the content and curriculum uh, is not really focusing on the 
multi stream convergence direction uh, at least at the uh, school education level or high, uh, or even let's say higher secondary level there is some extent it has, it is being done at the higher education level but at the school level it is not happening uh, second is i think uh, the, the acceptability among the students as well as among parents so uh, it's little easy uh, if we talk from a students from a uh, the tire one city perspective that they understand this convergence and other things but if you go back to the tire three or tire four cities parents or students may not be very much familiar with such concept and they will still prefer to go for the traditional education so uh, there is a need to popularize this concept number one number two there is a need to change in the content and curriculum right from possibly the uh, the secondary and higher secondary education level yeah. two more things i would like to add uh, one is the standards and assessment part of it the current standards and assessments if particularly the assessment part possibly uh, doesn't encourage uh, a student to become multidimensional whatever they are doing on their own at this point and their own interest perspective as well as uh, uh, if, if i talk from the workforce perspective there needs to be a continuous focus on the continuous professional development part so that upskilling and upskilling can happen on a continuous basis understand since since that's super that's very specific since we have nearly run out of time uh, it would be great to end by by you know if there is one one attribute one word that you would give to the youth to be ready just one word uh, thomas used the great word called curiosity uh, is there one word one attribute one skill and that's when i mean one i really mean one each of us if we can put that up front we can conclude this in a in a, in an interesting creative way uh start with uh, thomas since he led this one word thomas well, i used the one curiosity before i will add uh, agility the agility the, and curiosity the capacity of evolving of evolving through uh, what's happening to you you evolve with it you know you learn new things from every situation of your life agility so agility and curiosity are patented by thomas rucher um uh, i'll say uh, hard work supported with fearlessness don't okay. look at result hard work supported by okay done uh, sashi uh, convergence happens with lateral thinking so and in, improve and increase your lateral thinking abilities so lateral thinking hard work curiosity ability mr ghosh i think uh, the most important factor uh, in my opinion is the adaptability part of it you may have enough resources to learn but until and unless you adapt yourself to the situation uh, things not going to change so so there you are guys if if at all you can take cues from this adaptability agility curiosity hard work uh, i think uh, that's the whole gamut thank you gentlemen this has been fascinating i wish we had more time but Deepika will kill me if I exceed it even by a minute. Uh, so back to you, Deepika. Thank you, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Raman. We had an interesting session, and I'm sure everyone is now prepared and is preparing for all the skill set that you all have, the veterans have mentioned here.